All right, here's a lesson on the Mixolydian mode. I kind of think of this as sort of a Jerry Garcia, Grateful Dead sounding kind of a happy jam. It's like a major scale. But instead of the normal seventh note, you have a flatted seven, which gives you like a bluesy element or a slightly minor element. So that's going to be the kind of main position we're going to work out of to start with. That is what we know of as the fifth position of the major scales. Like if you were in G, that would be the one that starts up on the tenth fret. Now here we're going to do this. This is actually the key of D. This is going to be about an A major chord and a G major chord. Now the only place in a key that you see two major chords to step away from each other is the five chord and the four chord of a key. Uh, the, so that puts this in the key of D, actually. So we're using all the notes of the D major scale. If you see all those notes, they all match. So, um, But we have a tonal center change, so it doesn't feel like we're in D. It feels like we're in A. So we really have the feel of this A being our tonal center. So it's going to be like a thing like something like a Dark Star by the Grateful Dead. That'd be the kind of thing where we could work this scale. Now at the end I'm going to play the chords over and over again for a minute or so so you can kind of jam the things we've talked about with those chords. And I'm going to make that chord progression a little longer. It's not going to go so quickly from the A to the G. It's going to be like... About that long for each. So the first thing we want to think of besides just the notes of that scale position is where the triads are. for A and for G. So let's look in here. If we played all of the A major triad all the way up, five, four, seven, seven, six, five, five, nine. That's all the notes of the A triad. Now let's look at the G, same shape. Another thing, the way to look at this is say within one octave you got that one three five and here you have the next one three five and you have a one three one three five one three five you can also look at it as shapes like here is part of the a bar chord shape so as you're following the chord changes around you might come out of position a little bit just to play something that you know matches that lower g chords triad type of thing the next step is to look up here. If we get up into this position a little bit, let's go ahead up in here, seventh fret on the D string, uh, middle finger, seventh fret D string. Here's where the A octave starts in the next octave. So that's another good position to work out of. Then you have your G down here to pop you right back into where the A is going on. Here's another A triad, here's another G triad. So you also have things like this A part of a chord here and here. So you want to, first of all, uh, I guess next let's look at how the other positions are going to come into play here. So if this is what we knew of as like our fourth position, our third position is this, 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5. That's your, that's your uh, third position. Now, we're going to get into the next position after this first one we did. It's going to start in the 7th fret. This is what we know of as 5th position. Okay, then if we look at this one, we know as 1st position, but it's got this little added note here before the root, what would normally be the root, because we're in the key of D, so this is our D. Okay, and then we're going to be looking at what we know of as second position on the 12th fret. Okay, so you got all your positions. Now let's get, I'm going to play those chords a bit for you so you can practice some soloing. Also, we, also, we, we always talk about, we always start at like bass notes on this kind of stuff. So what if you look at your position again, get your notes in your head there. What if you started on this high A down here? When you start doing your soloing. You 
know what I mean? Kind of flip the script and don't always feel like you got to start on the bass notes. You can start on some high notes. So here we go. Let's, let's do a little jam along there. Think about where your A triads are, your G triads, and try to match those sometimes to the chord changes if you can. So here we go. Two, three, four. Here's another lesson on the Mixolydian mode, what I kind of refer to as the Jerry Jam, kind of a Jerry Garcia, Grateful Dead sounding. It's a happy chord progression type of thing, happy scale, kind of a major scale, but it has that flat seven note instead of the regular seventh note, and that's what gives it kind of a happy bluesy kind of vibe. Once again, the Mixolydian mode, this is going to be, it's actually in the key of D. But the chords we're playing are A and G. That's the five chord and the four chord in the key of D. So all the notes we're going to play in the A Mixolydian mode are all from the D major scale. But our tonal center is like A. It feels like we're in A, but we do have a flat seven. So I'm going to kind of show you um, in this lesson, take that triad thing one step further where we can see all these notes of the A chord, we see all these notes of the G chord, but we're looking for like the triad shapes in here. Like this is the A triad, 7th fret, 6th and ninth. This is the G triad, 5, 4, and 7. So in these different little positions, I'm going to also start here um, a lot, 7th fret, D string, middle finger. This would be like the next octave of that scale. We want to start here on this big A. That's the first octave of it. You can add that G in there too. But if we want to get up into the next higher octave, it sometimes makes sense to start here. And then we can finish off with some other notes in here. Go to the 12th if you want. So that's your A major again, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, and A, B, C sharp, D. So there's other things to look at too, like here's an A note, and that's its third right there. You can also extend that to this triad. But this is the A in its third, this is G in its third. So when you see these little shapes moving around, see this is part of that chord too, and you see this A down to G, you see this A triad down to G triad. So I'm going to put on some backing chords of the A and G, and I'm going to show you how I solo over this type of progression and how I'm able to keep track of which notes match the chord better at the time. Here goes the A chord. Now that seventh fret is part of that G triad right there. Back to A. And then here goes G, so I play a G note in its third. Down to that fifth part of the A chord. And that seven is part of the G triad. A. Both of those notes were part of the G triad. You can look at these notes as part of a G chord and an A chord. So if you start to visualize the different shapes of those triads of those two chords, that can help you within the scale, like pinpoint the notes that would sound the best too, you know? There's A. There's G. There's the fifth of G. Fifth of A. See 
that was part of A is try it. That's part of that A chord. So you can start to you see those shapes and you can start to make more informed decisions as opposed to just kind of noodling and not knowing what it's gonna sound like. You do this enough and you know exactly what it's gonna sound like when you hit some of these chord tone notes. So I'm gonna have you guys, you guys just go ahead and jam and stop this. I'm gonna play these chords behind you here. Three, four. Okay, I want to show you a couple more scales and then we're going to do that again. So once again, this is that first position of the A mixolydian on 5th fret area. So down here we're going to have um, this, basically this is the third position of all the five positions. 2, 3, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5. Let's look at the open position. This is a cool one too. You can do like pull off stuff. Stuff like that. So we're gonna have open two three, and there's your A, so that's basically our, our root note. O two three O two four O two four O two O two three O two three. So let me show you, I'm gonna play a little bit of this and I'll show you how to work that a little. That note is part of that A chord. Okay, so now you guys try. Three and four and. Okay, let's mix it up a little bit. Think about uh, Reeling in the Ears, Steely Dan. Starts on the G, goes to the A. So just, you got, you know, you got it reverse now, so you got to think about those G notes, and then you think about the A notes. We still got the same overall scale. Okay, so I'm gonna keep those chords going. G to A, three, four. Okay, here if we want to take that a step further, we can think about the Grateful Dead's Franklin's Tower. That's going to use the A and the G and be in that same mode, but it also has a D chord. So when it comes to that D chord, you have to look at the notes of the D chord, the triad of all that, so that you could hit proper notes to to sound like that chord when it happens. So it'd be like kind of three beats and then one beat on the G, 
three beats on the D, back to G. So here, here's your A note, D, A, little G, and then to a note from the D. So here goes those chords again. G to the D. Hey y'all, here goes another lesson on like the Mixolydian mode and the kind of Jerry Garcia jam. We're going to go further into the song Dark Star this time. So originally when I showed you those A to G chords, I let them go a little bit longer so you'd have more time, like four beats each. Down to the G. And that gave you more time to kind of find those triad notes of the G and the A and stuff and see where those chord changes happen but in the real dark star song it's actually like two beats each it's a quicker progression so you don't have as much time to hang on one chord you actually move to that g chord quicker so it's like two beats each like they're sharing a measure so to be like but also like a little brisker of a pace so that would be more like the real dark star and you got your a mixolydian mode that we talked about So let's get that uh, progression going a little bit here. shapes go back and forth. There's a cool little Jerry lick, you do the chromatic thing. Really anywhere where you see where some of these notes would be next to each other. It's cool to do a little chromatic there. Think about that three of the A also, that's a cool one to do that little, little half step thing. Remember, this is a blues scale in a way, it has a flat seven in it. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys jam on this for a while. Here comes the A and A, G, A, G, you got it. Let's talk about some other positions. We got the open. That's your like open position. Here's like your third position of major.
course, we had our first position of Mixolydian. Here would be your next position, which is like the fifth position. That one is like the fourth position of all those five positions of major. And this would be like your first position normally. have this one that would mimic that open one we did. It's a little different because we have the 11th fret. Okay, so let's talk about the melody of Dark Star now. So we're going to go from D to E up here. 10 to 12. That's 9 and 10. Now we're going to go 2nd string, 10 to 12. Once again, we got D to E, we got C sharp and D, and second string A to B, down to G, to G, A, G to E. Then on that third time of the verse, you're going to go to an E minor chord, and you can have that same melody, so it'd be like... So it's holding that E minor type thing over all that third time he sings it. And then you go back into your jam. Okay, I'll shut up for a minute. You guys jam. Here's your A to G. All right. There's some other riffs. Um, we have this little thing. Let's take a look at that. We got ninth fret and eighth fret on the D string. To the seven here on the G string. Do that twice. And then we got this riff. And that starts the A G progression again. So one more time we got. So one thing that I suggest for being able to fluently play through stuff like this is these exercises, stuff like thirds. And do different rhythms with them and stuff. Another one is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And you can swing them or you can play them straight or whatever. But if you do exercises like that and practice your down up picking with those things too, and all of those different positions, you can get really fluid and practice like swinging them too, like. Instead of just always. One and two and three and four and go like bum, bum, dum, 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 dum. stuff like that. All right, well, I hope this was helpful. Um, right on Jerry Garcia, right on Grateful Dead, and right on Mixolydian mode. We'll check you all next time. Keep on jamming. Thanks a lot. Like and subscribe if you like what you hear. I'm Damon Wood. Talk to you soon.